Hi there, I'm Marfia. Just a little encouragement coming your way. I'll be doing a lot of these little blurbs and they won't be very long. I think that um, you can get your point across without going too long. I'm not a preacher. I don't have a church. I just love the Word of God and I love encouraging people. And if I could say something that will make your day just a little bit lighter, that's all that matters. So I'll be doing quite a few of these little blurbs. And like I said, it won't be too long. It's just a little bit of encouragement. Uh, today I wanted to talk about something that, uh, there's a scripture in the Bible that I've read many times. And I've, I thought I had an understanding of it before. But I feel uh, this week that I got a really clear understanding of this particular scripture from God. Um, if you pray, you ask. He says he'll do it, right? It's what he says he'll do. So his word is true always, forever. He's forever faithful. Great is his faithfulness. I'm going to read the particular scripture to you, and I'm sure you've seen it before and or heard it before. It's um in Luke. It's Luke 11 and 24 to 26. And it says, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. I've, I won't say I struggled with understanding it, but I did not quite get the scripture. I knew it wasn't a good thing, but I never quite understood it. And um, there were particular, two, two particular things that I had before God that I've been, you know, asking God for deliverance from because they're real struggles. You know, they're called strongholds. Stronghold. You know, I, I'll give you the definition of a stronghold. A stronghold is, it, you could use, use the word fortress, but it's a place that has been fortified to protect it from attack. A place where a particular cause or belief is strongly defended or upheld. Now, it means there could be good stronghold or bad stronghold. The stronghold that you want in your life is the stronghold of the Holy Spirit. Things that are negative, things that are bad, things that are pulling you down or separating you from God, the love of God, that's not uh, the kind of stronghold you want in your life. And I, you know, eventually I'll share more things with you, you know, some more personal things that are not, uh, what they call it, TMI. <laughs> but it's just to encourage you because I believe that you overcome by the word of your testimony and others do overcome by the words of your testimony. So this particular, there are two particular strongholds that I've been um, dealing with and uh, this particular scripture came up. And I promise you, as I'm reading it, God gave me a clarity on the scripture. And um, it talks about that the, the unclean spirit goes out of a person and um, it's looking for a dry place and it can't find one, so it tries to come back. Now we all know, those of us who are, are, are believers, that uh, Christians are not possessed by any demons. We know that. But we do have some strongholds. Some people can't stop smoking, whether it's the white stuff or the other stuff. Some people can't stop using drugs. Some people can't stop drinking, whatever the situation, fornicating, adultery, whatever. But they're Christians, but they're struggling with a particular thing. And like I said, I have a particular situation that I was struggle, am struggling with, but I'm being delivered because I have a better understanding. When, a, when, a, when that particular stronghold is broken, the, that particular spirit tries to come back. But when he comes, he finally it clean and swept. So think of a, a house that was dirty, and now it's being clean and swept, and that particular spirit tries to come back and dirty that house again. So I'm trying to ask God, well, what do I do? Because this thing, I have prayed about this for a while, and it's been a struggle. And he showed me that what, what happens is when the house is clean and swept, you must now fill that empty house with something. That empty space with something. And we all know what that something is. The word of God. Fill the voids in your life. Fill the spaces. All the devil need is a pore. A tiny pore to enter in with his foolishness. Fill all the holes in your life. Fill any block. You know, human beings, God made us to need him and want him. Even those who don't know him, all human beings are created with a hole in them for God. And what we do is we go through our life trying to fill it with everything else. 
We go through our life filling it with drugs, men, women, depending on who you are, um, food, um, cigarettes, alcohol, whatever. Anything else, we find ourselves searching for something to fill this void, not understanding that that void can only be filled by your creator, your manufacturer, the person who brought you here, the person who brought you, who breathed life into your lungs. And so we end up seeking everything else. That's why we're so, we're messed up. We know that we are. We know we're fallen. We're messed up. And even after we give our life to Christ, even after we come to faith, we still struggle with certain things. So when you pray for a particular thing, if you're praying for God to deliver you from cigarettes or from alcohol or, you know, fornication, whatever, you must now fill that void because you have to understand, God's want, God wants you delivered and set free more than you do. See, you may only want to be delivered and set free because you're just tired of what it does to you. But God wants you free because he wants to use you and he can't use you in a certain capacity until you're free in that area. That stronghold, that particular fortified, that fortress needs to be pulled down. But when it's pulled down, and he will because he wants it more than you do, you need to now fill it with something. Or else that particular spirit will try to come back and fill that void. And when he comes back, it'll be worse. It will be worse. This particular thing that I've been struggling with, I promise you, I've prayed about it. And God has given me different ways of working around it. And I'm not going to lie to you. I have been disobedient after a while. Or when I become stressed, I go right back. And next thing I know... It's worse than what it was before. Listen, let me just let it let you in on what it is. It's eating. It's what's called a spirit of gluttony. I've gone through some things just like you did in my life, and I turned to food. And now food has turned against me. Now I'm healed from the things that I went through. But now I'm struggling with what food has done to me and food is trying to take over. It's a stronghold in my life and God has given me, oh my gosh, so many ways and plans to walk past this and I've, you know, I've been on the road and doing well and then something comes and instead of filling the void that tries to usurp itself of the Spirit of God, I let myself get stressed out and as soon as I get stressed out, I run to the refrigerator and so... I got it. <laughs> I feel like I finally got it. I feel like I finally understand. And so this is why I want to share it with you. When you feel that urge for whatever that thing is. And I mean, this is not the only stronghold I've ever had in my life. Oh my gosh. I'm Listen, I was a sinner just like anybody else. But I've watched God take them away. Now the same way that I fill those voids with the word, I have to fill this void of this thing of gluttony. More, 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 more. No vision of moderation. I need to feel it. So when I feel this urge to eat more than I need, need to survive, or, you know, stress, that stress eating, running to the refrigerator, grab the Bible, get on your knees, start talking to God. Find somebody, call somebody, and just start talking about the Word of God and fill the void. I promise you, again, Remember, he wants you delivered more than you do. God wants you, your father wants you delivered more than you do. And if you reach out to him, he'll reach right back out to you. Everything you need to be delivered from whatever a stronghold is in your life is already in place. The, the things that I'm doing now that are changing my eating habits in a week, they've always been there. They've always been there. So I find myself running to the word and I'm so encouraged by the word. And I went on a scale. Uh, I went to my doctor's office and I lost weight. Uh, it's only a little but Listen, listen, those of you who struggle with weight, with gluttony, you know, there's no one pound is the same as 10 pounds. <laughs> so I'm very encouraged, but I'm more encouraged with the word of God. And I'm more encouraged with the love of God and how much he loves us and how he'll go to any lengths. For his children. So please be encouraged. Fill yourself with the word of God. The Bible says where your treasure is. There will, there your heart will be also. That's um, Luke 12 and 32. Where your treasure is. There, there will your heart be also. My treasure is in heaven. This world is not my home. 
what's going on here is not about me. This is not it. This is not it. So I'm building up treasure. I'm not building up treasure in my refrigerator or my pantry. I don't want my flesh to take over. I don't want my flesh to control me. I want the word of God to dwell in me richly. And so the Bible says for me to put this flesh under subjection. I am not my flesh's master. I am my, I am my flesh's master. I, he's not my master. I think I said that incorrectly. Please forgive me. I am its master. It, I, it's not the other way around. So I tell my flesh when it wants more or when it wants to eat, when it doesn't need the food or when it's chasing that restaurant, the answer is no. And I do it not of my own because if I could, it would have been done a long time ago. I do it through the power of God. And I call on the Holy Spirit that was promised to me and given to me. And I ask him for help. I ask him, give me the strength, give me the boldness to walk past this. Give me the strength, give me the boldness to not do this. And guess what? He's a helper. He's a guide. He's a teacher. He brings things to your remembrance and he does exactly what he promises. So I go to him when I find myself in that struggle. When I find myself trying to get, you know, not go for that last bit of something or not eating when I'm not hungry. I'm finding the strength to the power of God to break that stronghold. I hope this encourages you just a little bit. Be encouraged. Know how much God loves you. A stronghold of a negative thing is not something that God wants for you. And the help that you need is already there. Just reach out and have ask the Holy Spirit for the, ask Him for the boldness and the courage to be delivered. God bless you.